I feel like the church is, is tipping this way this morning. We have, like, I don't know if we're, we're a little heavier on this side than we are on this side, but I'm glad you're here. The morning service grew again. Uh, we were up to 32 this morning uh, in morning service, so uh, everybody has, has been deciding to get up and get this cooled out of the way early and, and, uh, and go on their day, but the one time you came from the 1030 service, uh, this is the better service. I have half the man's eight o'clock when I have a ten thirty. So I just let you know that. Like they, they get. The, I always told my students when I taught school. I said, if you have me at eight o'clock, go change your schedule. Have me in the afternoon. You will enjoy me much better than that. But, uh, uh, we're glad you're here this morning. We do have a few announcements. Uh, the youth group will be meeting tonight from five thirty to seven thirty in the new building. Uh, they'll be putting the final touches on New Sunday. Uh, for next week. So, New Sunday will be happening next Sunday in both services, and we're going to try this once. We're going to see how the teenagers can exist at 8 o'clock and 10 30 uh, for both services. Uh, so, that'll be next week. Uh, we also are having, I'm having modified office hours this week. So, Wednesday I will be at the church from 1 to 6, and Thursday from 9 to 1 at the church. So, no office hours at the community center uh, this week. I did see Linda somewhere. Where did I see it? Linda. Okay, I will not be at the community center this Tuesday. I will not be. All right, so um, the next men's group meeting will be this Thursday at 7 in the new building. Prayer meeting will be tomorrow morning. Uh, also, Wednesday night supper and study continues. The All of God session 4 uh, will be this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, also, we have two volleyball events coming up this week uh, Open Volleyball Gym for Youth and Teens uh, will be held tomorrow at 6 30 in the new building, and Adult League Volleyball will be held. Uh, Tuesday at 6.30. Uh, we do have, I have one snow camp paper left this morning, so if anybody wants some information for snow camp, we'll have some more tonight. Um, if you would like to go or interested in going, please see Corey and Mel, they're starting a sign-up list, so we kind of know how many we have by going on the trip. Uh, also, if you would like to be an adult, uh, Tom Wedley is interested in possibly uh, going as a, a counselor, I believe, so uh, if you'd like to go as a counselor to snow camp, uh, they're also signing up counselors as well. Um, Super Pie Sunday is returning in uh, Sunday, February 4th. So two weeks from today, we will be uh, uh, up to our elbows in soup and pie. It will be a wonderful Sunday. Uh, so uh, you can bring soup, pie, both, neither, and uh, come and enjoy the, the day. And it will be after the 10.30 a.m. service in the new building. Uh, so... Uh, um, Anyone else have any other announcements this morning? Yes? Just remind them that there's lots of pizza for Wednesday night. Bibles. Yeah, we do have some pizza that will be uh, left, it's left over from release time that we put in the freezer and we will take it out and we'll have an encore presentation of Fox's Pizza this Wednesday night. Uh, so and if you're thinking about bringing pizza, don't bring pizza on Wednesday night. Uh, find something else. Uh, any other announcements this morning? All right, let's open with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that we are able to gather in your house and just worship you. And Father God, we're so grateful that when we come to, to meet you, you meet us here where we are. And so, Lord, uh, send your Holy Spirit down to, to be here with us and to teach us from your word. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right, do I stand to greet someone around you this morning? Let me know your class you. Yes, yeah, 
Well, it makes you feel better. I'm the worst situation. Or some of you are And I started to wonder what it is it that makes us attempt to make others feel better by showing them that we're in a bad situation as well. Is that something that we inherently learn? Of course, it's always helpful to talk with someone who also knows what their situation feels like. But I feel it's also important to be mindful of what we say to each other. Ephesians 4 29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as good for good and well. God tells us, hey, your job is to encourage people, not bring them down. The things you say, you should build them up, not break them down. And the Bible is right. What we say to one another, even hard truths, should be said in and with love. We should be offering joy to lift them up when they're weighed down and should be the life jacket that's going to carry them to their next point. And guess what? Even if you are encouraging them through your own pain, you might find that you're giving yourself the strength you need to make it through your situation as well. I hope that someone finds a reason to lean on you for encouragement. Speak God's word boldly and give them a reason to hope again. All right, so today as we're uh, taking a look at how to tame the tongue, we're going to be looking at how we are to be building each other up with our words instead of only tearing them down. And so uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 4. But as we uh, before we go there... Uh, let's just lift up the Lord, the Lord with the time of worship. So would you please stand? Yeah.
praises. Uh, what's God been doing good this week? Anybody have a praise that they want to share? Or you have some shout? Okay. Her surgery on her hand went well. She only has to look like Michael Jackson there for two more weeks. Okay. One glove. All right. Anybody else want to praise? Yes, Tracy. The Good Samaritan came and shoveled out the sidewalk in my driveway for me, so I cleaned it out with my itty bitty car. Okay. Anybody else with praise? Yes. James is crawling. James is crawling. Sue Jennifer's called. She hasn't been feeling well today, so uh, remember her and uh, Randy Mills with an MRI for his lower back, um, and uh, uh, for Donna Gunstrom, uh, and for Mandy Mills, and for uh, Sean Connor's dad had a fall uh, and injured his elbow. Or any other that have a prayer request this morning? Yes, Kim. Okay. My name is Wayne. Got on probation Friday and disappeared Friday night. Yes, Tracy. Um, just remember Donovan with his shots that he has every week, um, that he continues to have to do well, and then he doesn't have any bad reactions to them. And, <coughs> sorry. Also for my knee and my lower back. Teacher at the Academy is on a mission trip to Africa at the moment, so she asked for a, for a safe travels for her. Uh, she traveled from there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this from Mrs. Hawkins. Yes, Tracy. Yes. 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 Yes, Kim. Also, I, I wasn't going to say it because it's too early, but uh, my eye, I can see light here, here, like up, down, and to both sides. So I know that underneath that, my my eye is, is working. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. I forgot to mention my sister Tina and her husband Dennis. When we had that last big wind storm, um, the winds blew their huge front window, blew the glass into their house, and um, they had to have somebody come board it up. So they're supposed to be getting hopefully glass replaced into it. So I'm hoping they get one fixed. Okay. And they were all safe, by the way. Nobody got, nobody got Anybody with a, 
unspoken request, we just lift up the hand and Catherine's going to lead us in a um, prayer song and take us to the meeting.
that we have seen your prayers, uh, our prayers being answered by you this week. And, um, Lord, we just want to lift up those who need a touch from you. Lord, we think of Sue this morning as she's uh, just not been feeling well and having issues and with her eyes. And uh, Father God, we're, we're just praying over the sickness, Lord, that you would make her well and, and make her strong. Lord, we think of Randy. Uh, who's getting an MRI on his lower back uh, this week, and also Mandy, who's uh, having farther, further tests on her kidneys, and um, Lord, and, uh, we just lift them up to, to you, and Lord, we pray for Donna Gunstrom, uh, Lord, we just uh, ask you to be with her as she fell, and, and, and Scott's dad, as he had a fall and injured his elbow, Lord, we pray you bring, bring healing into his body, Lord, um, we think of, of Dane, who got off of probation, and, and just, uh, um, just flee the area, and Lord, we, we're just praying for him, that you would draw him back to you, um, and Lord, that you would uh, just give him wisdom in this time, and um, for God, and as he's uh, still receiving his weekly shots, that, that they would go well, and he would not have any bad reactions to them. Uh, Lord, we said, think of Tracy uh, with her knee and her lower back, Lord, uh, given her issues, Lord, we pray for, for healing in her body, Lord, we pray for uh, Gary Weaver, who is uh, dealing with brain cancer, and uh, Seth Abel, and uh, uh, Lord, we just lift him up to you and, and ask for your blessings to be over him. Lord, we, we think of Mrs. Hockenberry, and, and Lord, that she's going to be traveling to, to Africa and back over the next three weeks. Lord, we, we just pray for her and her and her time there, and we pray that uh, the mission uh, field would be right uh, in her time uh, over there. And, and Lord, for uh, wisdom and guidance, Lord, for men alone. Lord, we just lift it up, and, and Lord, it's something that we all need, and Lord, you told us that when we ask for wisdom, that you would grant it to us, and so Lord, we pray for wisdom. Lord, we also pray for the Kenans who are traveling, and we pray that you give them uh, traveling mercies. Lord, we pray for <coughs> we pray for Maddox, Lord, as uh, uh, he cut himself, and, and Lord, had to get four stitches in his thumb. Lord, we also think of um, Tina and Dennis that lost the front window and, and the cold and the storm. And, and Lord, for Alexa McCauley, Lord, we lift her up as well. And Lord, we pray um, especially for, for all of those who have an unspoken request and, uh, and didn't make mention of it. Lord, you know about each one. And so, Lord, we lift them up to your throne. And, and we pray over the rest of our time here this morning that you would be in the midst of everything that we say and do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, the children are dismissed for Children's Church this morning. brick by brick 
by the words that people pour into your lives. You start at the bottom and you're a product of all of the words that people have spoken over you and word by word, brick by brick, you're built into the person that you are today. And as Christians, we need to be in the business of building other people up with our words instead of tearing them down. And even when a person doesn't look like you've got much to work with, when it comes to them, look at your neighbor. Even when it might not look like you have much to work with, there is a process going on, and you need to be involved in that, building them up word by word, brick by brick, until they come into being the person that they are called to be. And so in order to do this, we really have to get our tongues under control. Because it's not easy to build each other up with our words. It is easy to tear each other down with them. You know, Paul was getting at this when he wrote to the church in Ephesus. Uh, and we're going to be taking a look at the, the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, we're going to start in verse 20 and read through 32. And we're going to, going to pay closer attention to, to what Paul says, especially about the words coming out of our mouth. And using them to build people up. So uh, Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 20 and reading through verse 32. And this is what he had to say. He said, That, however, is not the way of life you learn. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So we are to be building people up with our words. Period. Full stop, period, period. I'm going to go back and repeat. We are to be building people up with our words. And so when our tongues are tamed and are under full control, they will say things that will build other people up and not things that will tear other people down. So what does that kind of speech look like? Paul goes into more detail about it here. But before we get into this any further, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time. Scott, would you open us with a word of prayer? Amen. So the first thing that I see from this passage of Scripture concerning this building each other up, to build each other up, you must speak truthfully to one another. To build each other up, you must speak truthfully to one another. So last week, if you remember, we talked about the, the Scripture that, that says out of the heart, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in here will come out of here. And so, I also, that was from Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 45, but I also mentioned to you that that's not the only place in Scripture where Jesus had that teaching or a similar teaching. In fact, one of the other places this teaching is found is in Matthew 15, 17 through 19, and I want to read that to you. It says, it says, don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these Things to follow that. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. So this is a list that Jesus gives of the evil things that come out of our heart. And two of these things in particular I want to look at are, are, are things that come out of our mouth. And so on the same plane 
as murder and adultery and sexual immorality and theft are two things that come out of our mouth, false testimony and slander. So both of these things that come out of our mouth are a form of a lie or if they lack the truth. So when we have an evil heart, only the truth, or when we have a clean heart, only the truth will leave our lips. But when we have evil in our hearts, false testimony, lies, and slander come out of our lips. So if we're going to build people up, the first step that we have to take is we have to be committed to speaking truth at all times. Lies that come out of our mouth will never build someone up. That's backed up in our scripture for today in Ephesians 4, starting in, just in verse 25, it says this. It says, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. So if we're going to be building up our brothers and sisters and the people in the church pews and the people we come into contact with, our words cannot be full of lies, slander, and falsehoods. Instead, they must be the truth and be rooted in truth. Where do lies come from? They come from the father of lies, from the enemy. And they come out of the heart of those who are evil. But the one who is good uses the truth built inside of them to build one another up in love. And so what does this look like? It looks like sharing encouraging scriptures with one another because we always know that the scripture is true. We might not always speak truth, but the scripture always speaks truth. Uh, it comes through tough conversations in which you, which you share the truth, but you do it in a loving way so that you're building on the right foundation. It comes as you decide that you're only going to share and talk about things that you know are true and have proven to be true. Well, that's, that's, that's a different way of living, isn't it? And it looks like making truth the only building block that you use to build people up. So I want you to listen very closely. If you want to build someone up, you have to speak truth to them. You will never be able to build someone up if you're lying to them or if you're speaking falsehoods because they're of the evil one. Truth builds up. Lying tears down. That doesn't mean that we get a free pass and beat people over the head with the truth. That does not what that means. But it does mean that we make it a primary, our primary building block is that we speak truth into the lives of those that we come into contact with. So to build each other up, we must speak truthfully. Secondly, to build each other up, we must have our anger under control. We must have our anger under control. So we start building the foundation word by word, brick by brick. We give truth, we give truth, we give truth and love. And But we have to realize there is one condition it go, that goes on inside of us in which we are not able to build it. So just like if it was raining outside, you wouldn't want to be putting a roof on a building, right? You wouldn't want to be, be working in those conditions, and you wouldn't want to have your roof off in the rain. So you wouldn't do that, or if you were... Uh, how many of you have ever carried those long pieces of metal roofing around uh, in the windstorm? Yeah, those things are like a pipe, man. Like the, the, the wind catches those, and they're like they're they're just dangerous. That so you wouldn't want to be putting metal roof pieces on in the wind, or or carrying twelve feet pieces of drywall around in a storm outside. You, you wouldn't build in those conditions. And so when we're building into other people's lives, we cannot. We have to recognize we cannot build into their lives if we have anger in. And it doesn't even matter if the anger is towards them or is towards someone else. We cannot have anger and build one another up. Here's what our scripture tells us. In Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, Paul tells us, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anger is not a sin. But anger is a foothold of the devil, according to Paul. And he will always use it for his advantage and for our detriment. What is the solution? Paul's solution is this. Go deal with the anger that you have inside of you before the day ends. 
before the sun sets, take care of this. And so I want you to think about any relationship that you have. Is there someone that you are angry with? Paul says you need to drop everything and go take care of that anger because you can't build people up when there is anger inside of your heart. Go make things right between you and the other person. I'm, I'm telling you, this is this is big boy Christianity, big girl Christianity. This is not this is not for the weak or the faint of heart. This is where the rubber meets the road. Go take care of your anger. Because this is absolutely necessary because you can't build anyone up when there is anger flaring up inside of you. If you didn't believe Paul on what you should do with anger, maybe you'll believe James, the brother of Jesus. He says this in James 1, 19 through 21. He says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the work found in you, which can save you. We should be slow to anger, but if we are angry, what James tells us is we need to get be quick to get rid of this moral filth and evil so that we can get back to what God wants us to do, and that is to build one another up with our words. And Paul suggests we should do it quickly before the end of the day so that it doesn't give the devil a foothold. And Jesus himself tells us that we need to be even more urgent maybe than that with our anger towards our brother. In Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, starting in verse 21, Jesus says this. He gives this teaching. He said, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and therefore remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there in the front of the altar and first go be reconciled to them and then come offer up your gift. So if you're angry with someone, what Jesus says is that it's the same as committing murder against them. That you're responsible for the same judgment. And Jesus even goes far to say that at church, if you're there at church enjoying worshiping me and giving your offering, that you need to stop doing that and stand up and go take care of the anger. That's how important it is. You know, in a wedding, I always dread doing this part where you say, if anybody, therefore, has any reason to, that this man and this woman should not be with me, I'm like, a whole time, please don't. Anybody stand up. Please don't. Anybody. I haven't had anybody stand up yet. But in this instance, this is how important this is. Jesus says, if there's anyone here in church that has something against their brother, or they know that their brother has something against them, and you have anger in your heart, go ahead and stand up and go out and do something about it. That's how urgent it is. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. If anybody needs to stand up and go out, and I've given this opportunity before, go take care of it, because Jesus says it's that urgent. Because you can't build when you're angry. You can't let that evil fester inside of you. You can't even go to church and be around your brothers because it, it will, it, the anger inside of you will, will, will mess you up. Go take care of the anger and then you can continue building people up. The third thing we're told in the scripture, to build each other up, you must not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. You know, one year when we were, were doing our garden, we had a rather large garden that year, and we had a bunch of tomatoes that the blight got to, and so uh, they, they were no good for anything. They never really seemed to get ripe, and by the time they did get ripe, it just, they all just seemed to explode and be rotting on the vines, and, and uh, we got a picture of that back there. So if, if anyone has ever dealt with rotten tomatoes and sees that picture, that picture has a smell. Because that smell has been implanted in your brain if you've worked with rotten tomatoes. Just how rotten and putrid and disgusting and, oh, it's just a, a bad and rotten thing to deal with when a tomato goes bad. Well, when it comes to our mouth, one of the types of speech that Paul talks about that is the opposite of building people up is this unwholesome talk. 
And that word unwholesome means the same thing as if you were describing a rotten tomato. So if your speech resembles a rotten and putrid tomato, you need to work on that because that's not building people up. That's carrying them down. In Ephesians 4.29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome, rotten, putrid, disgusting talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. So if we have stuff coming out of our mouths that resembles a rotten plant that has a putrid stench, that needs to go. That's not helpful. It's not building people up. In fact, it repulses people. It's not healthy. It's just worthless. And it, and it goes against our God-given purpose that we are to build each other up, word by word, brick by brick. And so it doesn't matter if it's delivered in a funny manner. It doesn't matter if it's popular for a time. Our putrid speech has to be cleaned up so that we can build one another up. So instead, if your speech is rotten, useless, corrupt, depraved, it needs to go. In fact, your speech needs to be pleasing, useful, honest, and moral. That is the kind of things in our speech that will build other people up. So stay away from rotten speech so that you can be sure that your words are building each other up. And finally, to build each other up, the words that you share should benefit the person who listens. Your words should benefit the person, the person who listens. And I was listening to a podcast the other day, and I was really excited because it's one of my favorite podcasts, and, and they had a new episode come out, and it was like a 45-minute special with an expert about angels. And so he was just sharing a teaching for about 45 minutes on angels, and I was really excited for this. And, and as he spoke for about the first 10 minutes, I felt a little cheated because I didn't learn much about angels. Instead, I learned about how smart this host was. This, this guy who was directing, who was talking about angels, I learned how many degrees he had and what colleges he went to, and I, I learned about how his own theories about these things. And, and, and after I, I got done listening to the podcast, I realized I didn't learn anything about angels. I only learned about him. He shared about him. And so I wasn't being built up in any way, and it left me feeling empty. So when we are building other people up with our words, we get past our words needing just to be about us. And we realize that our words are for the benefit of other people. We can't be only interested in ourselves. We must be concerned with what other people will get out of what we say. Paul put it this way, again, reading verse 29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. When I have a conversation with my wife, I try to keep my talk about bicycling to a minimum. Because I like bikes, I like biking, she can care less. She has, does not like to ride bikes, she doesn't care about bikes, she doesn't like having a conversation about bikes. And she, I don't know the answer. You can't buy another bike. I already know the answer to that. And so, if, if I'm making my conversation constantly about bicycling and riding my bike, what am I doing? I'm making it about myself. And not about what she needs or what she wants to talk about. And so, in our spiritual discussions and conversation, we have to ask ourselves, am I, am I keeping the interests of the other person in mind? Am I, am I looking to their, to, to their interests? To build them up, we need to be sharing words that will benefit them and not necessarily benefit us. And in order to do that, I hope that we have beyond a, a, a surface level relationship. We have to have a relationship with them in which we know the things that will benefit. We will know what they like. We will know what they don't like. We will know what they need. And so we have to have Go beyond what we want to talk about and share things that will benefit those who are listening. This is our task. 
We are to build each other up with our words. Word by word, brick by brick, we're building masterpieces out of the people around us. And in, in order to do that, we have to do four things. Number one, every word we share with the other person must be true. Number two, we can't build other people up if there's anger in our heart. Number three, steer clear of unwholesome and rotten words coming out of us. And four, make sure our words are benefiting those who hear them. So if we stick to this mission, brick by brick, building with our words, I believe we'll have some wonderful surprises at the people that come out of this building process. And they may not look like much now, but they will look like masterpieces when we have laid the right foundation and we have built and built and built upon it. This is a needed step in taming our tongues, and the world needs this now more than ever. Would you pray with me? Lord, this is the goal. Word by word, brick by brick, we are to be building up the people around us. You have given us this charge, and Lord, this is an integral part if we're ever going to tame our tongues, that we only speak things that will build up and we never speak things that tear down. So Lord, help us to follow this. Help us to speak truth. Help us not to build in anger. Help us to, to, to not to let unwholesome things come out of our mouth. And Lord, um, help us to, to, to have this relationship with others in, in which we seek to, to benefit them and not just us with our words. Lord, make us expert builders with every word that comes out of our mouth, building into someone's life a positive and wonderful, godly thing. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we close with the song? Because this will be a daily battle for us, that this battle belongs to the Lord.
through seven. Lord, I know that this is true. And number two, would I say that all the parties are here? That will that will be helpful. Go out and take control of your tongues because we have a charge. It's to build each other up and not tear each other down. So go and do that this week and be blessed. You have a wonderful Sunday.